Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here to talk about motion sensors, specifically PIR motion sensors, like the Panasonic modules we recently released on four new breakout boards. PIR motion sensors are used for a variety of applications. Have you ever walked into a room or down a long hallway only to have the lights turn on by themselves as if they understood that your very presence demands illumination? Well, I hate to break it to you, but that is not the magic of the world lauding your greatness. That is the magic of PIR motion sensors. The PIR motion sensors are used extensively in commercial settings, where you don't want lights blaring for hours at a time if no one is in the area. Now, the P in PIR stands for passive, meaning that these modules do not radiate energy for detection. They simply detect infrared radiation in the area. Additionally, these are not proximity sensors. While they can tell you whether or not someone is there, they can't tell you how far that person is. So how do they do it? Let's take a look. The PIR is a pyroelectric sensor with multiple sensing elements, usually either two or four, on its face, each with their own detecting areas. These are connected to an amplifier and a comparator. They're designed in a buck configuration, which cancels out sunlight, ambient temperature variations, and other atmospheric changes. And when the voltage from all sensors is the same, everything is Jake. However, when something warm passes in front of them, the voltage changes in one, then the other, indicating motion. Some PIR sensors will have a Fresnel lens. Those are the ones with the white dome. And this spreads the detection area out to usually about 170 degrees. Others, like the Panasonic modules that we now use on several of our motion sensor boards, use four sensing elements for higher accuracy and resolution, but a slightly more narrow field of view. Now, you might think that this technology would be great for detecting zombies around the perimeter of your compound once we get to that stage of the apocalypse. However, the sensor's circuitry limits the IR range to a range encompassing the body temperatures of humans and animals. Now, because of this, this would not be a good choice to warn you with the approach of zombies, skeletons, or anything else that's not warm-blooded. As I said earlier, these modules are used quite extensively for lighting, but they're also used quite a bit for security systems to make sure that cameras are only recording when someone is in the room. Additionally, they're used quite a bit for IoT applications, as well as vending machines, to illuminate the lights inside the machine when someone walks by or turn on an ad overhead. And I have my suspicions that they're used quite a bit in grocery store vegetable departments to make sure that mister sprays me in the face every time I reach for that perfect bunch of asparagus. But I digress. Now, all of these uses are important and commendable, but honestly, most of the time that I've used a PIR motion sensor, it's been for a Halloween build, or at least for a prank build. I'll explain, and I'll use an example from one of my favorite movies, Young Frankenstein. If you're familiar with this film, you'll remember the part where Dr. Frankenstein goes downstairs and he sees a row of heads all severed and mounted, and each has been dead for a varying amount of time. Now, as he walks by, the fourth head, in fact, is not a severed head, but it's his assistant, Igor, who scares him senseless. Now, I wanted to recreate this scene, but I don't have an assistant. PIR motion sensor to the rescue. So I used one of these new PIR motion sensor breakout boards with the Panasonic module, along with our quick MP3 trigger and a handful of servos. Here's how that went. Good Lord. Nobody cares for I me. Mean, Igor! Frederick! So, whether you're looking to lower your electric bill, expand your IoT project, or improve on your Halloween display, PIR motion sensors are a tiny, inexpensive, and versatile way to elevate your project no matter what it is. So, get out there and start creating, and until next time, happy hacking! Specifically, PIR motion sensors. That's all I got. I probably have more than that. They're also used for IoT applications, as well as the other thing I was going to talk about, vending machines. 